Cantrip Control. Welcome to our EDH video tutorial on how to build control decks using cantrips. The card you are currently looking at, Shadow of Doubt, is such a cantrip card. A card that does something and then draw a card, basically kicking the can down the road. And the effect is such a control effect, an interaction against your opponents. Players can't search their libraries this turn. Therefore, cantrip control. Normally, cantrips either have a higher casting cost, like in the Miss case, which is two more mana compared to a normal counterspell, or bind that has a weaker effect compared to stifle. This can only counter activated abilities. Stifle will also stop triggered abilities and bind costs one more mana compared to stifle and then the last thing is that sometimes cantrips have an other effect that isn't really a true card draw effect like colligan's command now with colligan's command you have a lot of different options and one of the options you can choose is to return a creature card from your graveyard back to your hand they could also have a kicker cost for two more mana you get to draw a card when you cast Blink of an Eye and Into the Royal. Now why am I making such a fuss about these card draw cantrip effects? Why not just play counter spells that have a lower CMC cost and better effects compared to the cantrip cards? Let's draw a typical scenario when one of your opponents are gonna cast Flash and they will most likely follow up with Protean Hulk and in response you cast counterspell to deal with this problem. Now the active player, the one that casts flash, and the reactive player, the one that casts counterspell, are both going down in hand size by minus one. Protein Hulk will still remain in the hand of the active player. But in a four pot game you have two more opponents and they are unaffected by this outcome. They still have plus minus zero cards remaining in their hand size. In other words, the reactive player, the one that cast their counterspell, have both sacrificed two mana and a counterspell to help this out. He have, in other words, group hugged the team and helped everyone out from losing. And yes, I actually do consider that group hug. Let's draw another scenario. Here you have a typical aggro commander, Surgu Helm Smasher casual aggro deck. His game plan could be to kill one player one at a time with commander damage. And whenever Surgu is choosing me as a secondary or last target, I consider him a group hug commander for me. He is helping me kill my opponents. In every free-for-all multiplayer game, regardless of what game, what you always want is to have your opponents kill each other. One opponent dealing with another opponent and you can just sit there idly and increase your production. Expand or ramp and draw cards. Until you are capable of killing everyone. If we go back to the scenario with Flash and Protean Hulk, instead of casting a counterspell, we let the Flash resolve, but in response to the Hulk trigger, we cast Shadow of Doubt. This will stop the Hulk from doing anything. In this scenario, we draw a card. This means that we're going plus minus zero in hand size, while the Flash Hulk player, the active player, went down minus two in hand size and we didn't group hug anyone. Sure, we made sure that no one lost, but we didn't sacrifice ourselves to it in the process. By the way, here are three more examples of cantrip control cards that will deal with Flash Hulk combo, like Cremate, exile target card from a graveyard, then draw a card, one black mana. Hallowed Moonlight, until end of turn, if a creature would enter the battlefield and it wasn't cast, exile it instead. Cast this in response to the Protean Hulk trigger and then draw a card. Nimble Obstructionist, you can stifle the Protean Hulk trigger and prevent it completely and then draw a card. One more thing that cantrips helps out with compared to counter spells is that they help us walk through our deck. Compared to other interactions like Lightning Bolt and Counterspell and Force of Will, they don't progress your game plan. While cantrips, cards that draw cards in the process of doing something else, actually does. You will decrease the deck size and then 
increase the chance of drawing your combo pieces. This is how Remand is utilized in a modern. You aren't really interacting with your opponent with your Remand. You're basically just slowing them down, making them walk in a dirt pile, while you are digging and progressing through your deck faster, digging for new answers. It's also going to synergize with graveyard strategies like Delve. You can fuel your graveyard easier and faster with cantrips because you're drawing a card that will eventually also most likely end up in your graveyard. And that will fuel your dig through time. That you can cast your dig through time for less by delving away all your cantrips that you've used. Now, if you're playing cantrip control style and you're trying to become an arch enemy, you should aim at interacting with each opponent. If you've cast each one of these three cantrips against one of each opponent, you have basically gone plus minus zero in hand size, because you've used a card and then you've drawn a card, while each opponent have gone down minus one card. In other words, you are slowly outvaluing your opponents. You have now slowly turned into an arch enemy, grinding out your opponents and then eventually slowly winning with some form of combo, whatever, or maybe beatdown with your hate bears and your commander. I guess that I should mention Rashmi. Rashmi will make the first spell you cast each turn into a cantrip. She will do this strategy without even including a single uh, original typical cantrip spell into your deck. Let's also mention the TNT, Francis and Timna. These two commanders together have the strongest card drawing potential within this format. And they can draw so many cards that they don't need this cantrip control strategy. They can rely on low CMC cost cards instead. And they can also become this arch enemy without including any single cantrip cards whatsoever. And this is potentially the biggest reason why we don't see so many cantrip cards within the format, because these two commanders don't need them. But if we take a look at Breya, Nayela and Marath, they don't have a card drawing option on them. They are combo pieces in the command zone. In Breya's and Marath's case, they will win you the game if you gain infinite mana. And Daniela will basically give you all five color identities and the possibility of gaining infinite combat steps from one card combos from your deck. They also have some juicy abilities. Both Breya and Marath can interact and destroy creature cards with a lot of mana by sacrificing them. And Nayela can potentially overrun all of your opponents by generating a tremendous amount of tokens. But the decks they are piloting need to solve the card drawing problem and cantrip control could be such a game plan. Now, as always, in the description below of this video, you will find a link, actually two links. The first one will go take you to a tapped out page deck list with Nayela cantrip control. The secondary link will take you to a card list, a CDH cantrip control card list that will showcase a bunch of cantrips that I consider good for the CDH metagame and format. Some of them actually demand a little bit of thinking, like Winnow. Destroy target non-land permanent if another permanent with the same name is in play, and draw a card. If you're playing Tymna, and there's an opponent that is also playing Tymna, then you have a target, you can destroy his Tymna. Or if you're playing Nigella and they have a Nigella, you can destroy their Nigella. Another typical target is Sol Ring. You can also destroy Carpet of Flowers, which is usually a card two player controls in the same game. Usually we are playing very similar decks and the same cards are usually existing within every single deck, like Sol Ring. The card list, however, is not going to include every single possible cantrip. I'm not going to include Wall of Omens, and this due respect. Due respect could actually be good in the right playgroup. But in general it's not that universal, it's going to interrupt Kiki Hiki at the best. And this Wall of Omen is not really what CDH decks are including. Now this is it for this video, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope this video have inspired you in building new cool deck IDs. 
that is pretty much the goal of this YouTube channel. Take care guys and I will see you next time or maybe I will see you on Play EDH Discord or maybe on a Grand Picks tournament for Commander.